Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Instance. This is The Instance, episode 665. It is February 11th, 2022, and uh, I'm Scott Johnson, joined today by Jocelyn Kearney. Hello, Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Hello, hello. Jocelyn. <laughs> you almost got there. I almost got your name. <laughs> you know, it's pretty pretty damn good for a guy who does podcasting every day of his life for the last 20 years. And yet somehow I still F up people's names. Good deal. Hey, also Garrett Weinzerl over there. Hi, Garrett. Hey, Scott and Joss. Hi. How's how's Florida? How's Florida it's, right now? Is it all right? Uh it was chilly yesterday. It's 74 now. Oh, you bastards. All right. That's fine. Actually, we're warmer than usual. We're in the forties. That's high for us in this time Ooh. of year. Yeah. So uh, you know, snow's melting and uh, we're all in a very good mood. Uh, I we heard had like some five days in a row where it was in the 40s, and that is not normal. No, you guys, that's that's a uh, tundra time for you guys. You don't. You don't killed one of my pineapple tundra plants. Time. I'm very sad. <laughs> <laughs> tundra time. It's a hot new mobile game that we'll talk about later. Hey, did you? Um, uh, uh, did, I heard rumor. There's a rumor floating around that Jocelyn is playing or about to play Final Fantasy 14, and I really about need. To play. I need to know more about this because. There was a point where you had said, I think in the past, you said, oh, I tried and I didn't like it, but now you're coming back around. What happened? Well, okay. So I've never actually tried it before. My husband is a huge Final Fantasy player. He was like world first rating back when it came out. Like then he stopped and went to WoW for a while, but now he's back into it. And he's been bugging me off and on kind of anytime I walk into his room and he's playing, he's like, hey. Want to, want to see my unicorn? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Joss, we're talking about playing video yeah, games. Yeah, we're, we're, getting, a, we're, we're getting a window into the li- the personal life. Uh, that's fantastic. Well, he does that because, A, you love unicorns, and, B, he wants you to play the game he's playing. I get that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Matt has so, used that same pickup line on me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Matt well, and Garrett have a very special relationship. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So, uh, so you're going to do it? Was it tonight? You're going to stream it? Or are you going to? Yeah, gonna... I'm going to stream it tonight. Um, so, I, yeah, I've never actually played before, but um, last week. So, I've been doing this thing where I've been streaming Friday nights. It's been really, really fun. And I put up a poll on Twitter every week saying, "Hey, what do you guys want to watch me play?" And Final Fantasy. Well, I put other, but um, it was made very clear in the comments that Final Fantasy got just as many votes as Constructed Hearthstone, which normally is like my bread and butter, yeah, <laughs> right? Sure. So it was so weird. And Garrett, yeah, all, Garrett started it all because he just commented below FF14 question mark, mm-hmm. and like everyone was like, "Yes, do it!" Hearts, hearts, likes everywhere. And I was like, "Okay, I don't think I can ignore this." So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Okay. I'm People, not saying the, I'm gonna like love it or have time for it or anything else, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna try it, guys. <laughs> I like that you're approaching this from a uh, from the perspective of uh, you're gonna find out for yourself. You're not gonna cave to the pressure of the very person that you're married to and live with. You're not gonna <laughs> cave to the pressure of your fellow gamers. You're gonna actually evaluate this on its own, and you know as well as I do that freaking Forbidden West is like what a week and a half away. Not even that. Yeah, that's what I'm streaming next Friday. <laughs> Yeah, so there's no oh, there's no boy. getting around that, right? Like you're yeah. gonna play that. So uh, I mean, I did order like the super ultra mega collector's edition for Forbidden West, so I'm hoping it's here on launch day, but it might not make it. <laughs> yeah. One weird side note: we talked about it in our planning uh, discussion earlier uh, via Discord, but it's kind of weird thing they're doing. So this represents the last game Sony is going to allow people to upgrade to for free from PS4 to PS5. So the idea is. If you have a PS4 or a Pro and you haven't been able to get a PS5, which is most people, um, you can grab the game in its current form. And when you do get your PlayStation 5, you have a free upgrade path to doing that. The weird part about it is the PS4 version of the game is 10 bucks cheaper than the PS5 version of the base game. And you could, in theory, and a bunch of people have already done this, I guess, so I guess it can work uh, with people with pre-release copies. You can go in buy the even digital or disc version, doesn't matter, digital version of the game for the PS4 price and then immediately convert it to the PS5. On a PS5 console, this entire transaction can take place. And now you've got the PS5 version basically with a $10 discount. Now, I agree. Jocelyn said something that I totally agree with. I'm not going to do even bother for the 10, 10 bucks is not going to change my life enough for me to want to get weird with it. <laughs> but that's but that's my problem is that it Sony's so weird with this stuff right now. Like on the Xbox is just like, ah, here's the new version here. You know, like they they have not had any of this. 
and 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 Sony with their well for now free upgrade path. It's still going to cost you, le- or, you know. They have this weird price thing, and then, but in future, we'll be adding. It'll cost you money to be- like they've got a weird bunch of rules that I think aren't yeah. good for them PR wise. I don't know why they're doing it. it. Doesn't actually benefit them very much. I don't think. Um, so- you don't like reading spreadsheets to like realize what works on what, or or trying to <laughs> scrutinize your PS5 screen with a magnifying glass to realize what version of a game you're even playing. Yeah, good point, Garrett. That's the other thing is tiny little text saying things like you know ps4 only and you're like wait a minute put that up top so i can see it I'm, I'm still like grumbly about their whole hard drive situation because it could have had such an easy win over microsoft if mm-hmm. they had streamlined mm-hmm. that shit a little bit yeah. more but nope i gotta go to a spreadsheet to be like okay does this one work and uh, sometimes the answer is maybe which sometimes is, I <laughs> maybe i love having my answer be maybe yeah so you're saying there's a chance kind of deal i get it uh yeah. well anyway yeah, so that's dumb, great dumb dumber, jocelyn i'm i don't know what i hope for you with this experiment except uh you've already played you've already played the hardest boss in the game which is account management and setting up uh, oh my character. god it's terrible yeah it's really <laughs> like, bad it is the You're worst bad. account management i've ever gone through yeah. like i'm a pretty tech savvy person and i really struggled and if my husband hadn't told me that like their accounts were under like moogle or some weird word like Excuse i don't me, even it's mog station okay I'm sorry sorry yeah, mog no, I, like, I, what about logo. that says hey this is where you get final fantasy and not like this is going to download a lot of viruses onto your computer enjoy yeah <laughs> like, I, I, it's garbage it's garbage i, I mean what it. does battle net really mean at the end of the day <laughs> means uh, like mog station doesn't sound like anything to me (laughs) they would tell me it's an mmo (laughs) part of it part of the reason that battle net works is because it's had two decades of brand establishment and there's some strength behind that and it's you know whatever but mog station come on and not only that it's like you get to the page you're like now here when that where we're okay yeah there's so many buttons (laughs) it's really it's really hideous so yeah i hope that 2022 is the year that maybe those guys tweak that some because your game's great, good job, well done. You're and you're also hot. It's so hard to get to. Yeah, and you're having a and moment. It's great. You but can't have a, do the free. Uh, you can't do the free trial anymore. The button on the website's grayed out. Oh <laughs> yeah, they, like, no, we can't handle well, it. <laughs> it's too successful. Like yeah, you, like like get out of here, freebies. Pay up or get out. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that so the deal? I, did, I bought the twenty dollar like basic game <laughs> oh but well, no sub there's, there's no a lot of yet. yeah yeah there's a lot of game there um, yeah yeah oh plenty yeah. of game there yeah that you'll have you you will know in this 20 dollars whether you're gonna stick around or not yeah and i keep sort of bouncing right. around just because i'm i don't know it's still not grabbing me the way all my sort of current next wow friends are are glomming onto it uh i wish it would but it's just i don't know maybe it's Maybe it's the some of the anime stuff just still rings weird with me and it's just hard for me. But um, but, you know, I don't know. I keep hearing such amazing things about the new expansion, but I'm a million miles from the new expansion. So yeah, I don't know what to think about it. I'm, I'm really enjoying the first expansion uh, a lot. It's oh, uh, well, it was called. Hold on. Uh, Heaven's word. Light. Oh, Heaven's, Heaven's word. 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 It's Heaven's yeah, word. I'm- I'm really liking it. I, yeah. I didn't mind A Realm Reborn. I kept getting warned that it was slow and methodical, and and it is. But I kind of liked it. Like it, like it kind of had this. I don't know. It was nice getting to know the quirky characters. Kind of at the speed that they came at you. Yeah. Um, you had then, a you had the the same I think XP bonus thing that I'm gonna have too, right? Like where yes. you got recruited or something, so you get 25 percent extra XP or I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I haven't had any XP issues whatsoever. I've been over level the basically the entire time. Really early on, I hit um like a gear requirement. Like, hey, you need like you don't even have like gloves. You should probably get gloves. Um, <laughs> and really, really early on, it can be a little bit of a hiccup because uh, of you eventually once you start hitting dungeons, you will never want for money again. Yeah, basically, was yeah. my experience. But before you hit dungeons. You have no money. Uh, it's, it's, the money's a little hard to come by. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's also, don't, uh, here's the advice I wish somebody had given me or in the early days of leveling in that game. Unlike WoW and other titles you might be used to, don't do side quests. Just oh. stick to them. Well, I mean, you can't, I'm not saying don't if you like to do them. It's fine. Go ahead and do them. But they're often little short, fetchy quests and things like that. But you don't need them to get XP enough to go to the next thing. If you do that, you'll be over leveled every second of the day also mm. there's there's so many of them that if you get in with a wow headset and you just, like mindset and you just grab everything yeah. you 
<laughs> like you're gonna be like level 20 and still on the second main story yeah class. it's really <laughs> weird i don't know why all that filler's there i guess the game has just evolved and changed but the you don't there's need not the nearly XP. as much of it like yeah. when you go to like heaven's ward like you can immediately see like oh they they figured this out but, yeah like a realm reborn like there's so much stuff there um yeah if it doesn't have the little burning meteor icon just ignore it yeah you want the little okay. burning meteor everything else is fine and I, you know what? And there's, nine times out yeah. of ten, you'll only ever have one of those quests at a time. Yeah, yeah, and I like Which that. Which makes sense if, you, if it's the main storyline, yeah. <laughs> right? And, and then uh, have have Matt explain qu uh, class quests to you. Yeah, you know what? Okay. You do this in ESO already, Josh. You're going to be great because that game's really good at letting you either avoid side quests. Although side quests in ESO are never little weeny quests they're always amazing. Some yeah, of, some they're of always better. really good. <laughs> yeah, so some of those you don't want to avoid just for the fun of it, but. But you kind of do know how to mainline an expansion in that game and then maybe go back and do other side stuff because it remembers where they were in town when you pass them and that sort of thing. It's a bit like that. You can just kind of breeze past the girl with the dog sitting there staring at you and go straight to the dude with the burning <laughs> meteor over his head. And you'd be all set. I am really bad at that, though. <laughs> like, if somebody's like, um, hello, I need your help. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll be right there. I'm so sorry I made you wait. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume you so never beat The Witcher 3 then. <laughs> no, I have not. Because <laughs> I have that problem and I haven't beaten The Witcher 3. <laughs> has any of any, I only know one person personally that has truly beaten every single inch of The Witcher 3 and she, uh, she cleared everything. She's 100% of that game. And I don't know how she did it. Uh, my friend Corinne, she just cr creamed that game. <laughs> and there's no way. Like, there's no way. I mean, there's stuff in the starting area, Place City, Skellig, or whatever the hell it was called, that I never touched again. And I know it's still there waiting for me. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'll be playing that game when I'm 80. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be great. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, there you go. That's a fun little uh, uh, t a taste teaser for what's going on in Joss's life and her gaming world. But uh, today... I have an interesting discussion. Let's get to it. So there was, there's this guy. Let me start with a story about a guy. Here's a story about a guy, except it's usually a girl. Anyway, Brad Smith, president of Microsoft, not to be confused with CEO. Uh, there are numerous guys sort of like this and VPs and others who have a voice at the company. Um, this is someone who is not head of Xbox. Uh, that would be Phil Spencer. This is somebody who's much higher up than that. Um, signs everybody's checks kind of guy and he has a habit not a habit he has a record of doing official blog posts from his desk and from his own heart and soul to discuss different issues that might be happening around the company and they're usually big swath issues and as it turns out a 68 billion dollar acquisition is a mass is a huge issue uh, so of course he's talking about it. but in the past you might see him say things like Hey, we as an industry should get out ahead of um, what AI ethics should be and uh, not just wait for the government to regulate these things. And we should be smarter and more ethical about how we implement these things. And a lot of times he does these sort of posts to speak to regulators, to governments, uh, and so on. To kind of say, hey, here's the official plan and line that we're, that we're taking here at Microsoft. I mean... Quite literally, his his headline for this thing was Microsoft wants to bring Call of Duty and other Activision Blizzard games to Nintendo consoles. Oh, wait, that's a different headline. Hold on. The one on his blog is what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm reading this out of order. Here it is. Adopting, or sorry, adapting ahead of regulation, colon, a principled approach to app stores. Now, he literally says in the thing what he's doing. He's adapting ahead of regulation. He's saying... Hey, before you guys start throwing rules at us or whatever, uh, we'd like you to kind of know what our plan is, and and this will hopefully help push things through. Um, I know it'll be easy for people to immediately see that and be skeptical of motives and that sort of thing, but I think this I think this guy's been pretty consistent uh, through time. So I just wanted to give kind of a, a history of who this you know who this Brad is. <laughs> um, and and what and Brad. Brad Smith is the most basic name ever. I love it. Uh, <laughs> and what his plan is. So he's uh, shade. <laughs> here's what and Scott Johnson. I, I know, <laughs> right? Brad, dude. <laughs> no, I feel, dude. I feel his pain. I feel his pain every day. I guess it's a boring ass name. I, I get it. Um, I anyway, I don't know what you're talking about. No, of course not. Garrett Weinzerl. That's a cool name. That's awesome. Like German it's weird. One that never gets written down right when you're making a reservation at a restaurant. 
It sounds like a German <laughs> tank or something, like the Weinzerl. We're sending out all the Weinzerls to fight in the Eastern Front or something. <laughs> It's really cool. I believe it's of uh, mostly Polish descent. Oh, is it? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a messy area that I just drove us into. Anyway, (laughs) let's uh, just like a tank in Poland. I've been watching. uh, I've been watching some documentaries about World War II, that in color stuff on Netflix, and some nasty stuff happened in Poland. Anyway, moving on. Let's uh, let's get to what Brad Smith said. So here's what he said uh, initially. At least this is well. Okay, so this is part of the interview he had with. CNBC, but it all started from this blog post, which I'll read first. He says, uh, too much friction. This is just part of it. Too much friction exists today between creators and gamers. App store policies and practices on mobile devices restrict what and how creators can offer games and what and how gamers can play them. That's a little bit of a stab at Apple, I think, as well. Anyway, he says, our large investment to acquire Activision Blizzard further strengthens our, res- our resolve to uh, remove this friction on behalf of creators and gamers alike. And here's where it gets interesting. We want to enable world-class content to reach every gamer more easily across every platform. We want to encourage more innovation and investment in content creation and fewer constraints on distribution. Put simply, the world needs app market, open app markets, rather, and this requires open app stores. The principal uh, principles we're announcing today reflect our commitment to this goal. Uh, now, you might think, well, that's boring. That's just app stores and, you know, who cares? Uh, he goes on to say in his interview with CNBC, one of the things we're being very clear about as we move forward with the regulatory review of this acquisition is that great titles like Call of Duty from Activision Blizzard today will continue to be available on Sony PlayStation. We'd also like to bring it to Nintendo devices. We'd like to bring other popular titles that Activision Blizzard has and ensure that they continue to be available on PlayStation and that they become available on Nintendo. Um, so from that, we'll kind of take that as our, our launch point here. Uh, they don't want... This feels consistent to me with what Microsoft's been doing for the last couple of years, but they want go- the government and all of us to understand that this isn't a move to like hide it all in their, in their uh, ecosystem, that they're not interested in making these xbox exclusives they've clearly done that with some titles they've acquired in the past um and and some moving forward like starfield and there's others that are, have question marks around them uh however in this case this makes perfect sense to me because if you're going to spend 68 billion dollars with a b and part of that is the world's largest like it or not largest most successful shooter franchise of all time you don't first thing you do go in there and spend all that money and then cut half its value off or more than half of its value off by saying, Nope, it's only PCs, our store and, uh, on Xbox, uh, sorry, PlayStation go pound sand. I never thought they were going to do that. A whole bunch of people thought they were, but there's no way half the reason you buy that company is so that you get the things that are already making money for them and you keep making money for them where they're making money. And PlayStation is a place where they continue to make a lot of money. So, um, I don't know if anyone's got initial thoughts on this. I think that this is a, these are good things to hear. And I think we can lead this discussion into what does this actually do to blizzard games? You know, what we, what we see, I don't know. Uh, Hearthstone on the switch. <laughs> yeah, there's a good one. Why not? Like, I don't know why Hearthstone's not on the switch. It's a damn touchscreen. It would just work in its current mobile form. Um, not that I, you know, people may not want to play it that way or they'd want some kind of controller support, but PC There's doesn't... a lot of people that play Hearthstone on mobile. Yeah, they're right. I mean, I don't. You know the numbers? How does it break down? Does anyone know that? Oh, I don't. Blizzard doesn't tell us the they numbers. Don't tell us. They <laughs> yeah. Don't tell us that stuff. But yeah. every time we mention, like, oh yeah, that one mobile player, we get tons of tweets and emails saying, "But I play on mobile. I play on mobile. I play, I play on mobile." Yeah. yeah. You know who we hear from? Justin and Brian. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the two the two most non gamer gamers I know. They don't play anything. <laughs> yeah, if you ask Justin, hey, what do you play or what games do you play? I don't, he said, I'm not a gamer. I just play Hearthstone. Kind of a funny yep. thing. And only on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, you know, obviously that's a place where people want to play it or whatever. And I know a lot of us would prefer to play it on a computer. But their point is let's play it everywhere. Let's stop mm-hmm. having, you know, these limits. And yeah. um, I think that'll end up applying to... I mean, I would love... I keep wanting to say this will apply to Heroes of the Storm because I still love heroes of the storm but i don't think they're 
I don't think that's going anywhere, right? They're not going to put... Garrett, give me your hot take on that. Do you think Heroes of the Storm is part of Brad Smith's vision of let's put it everywhere and let everyone play it wherever they're at? Uh, I mean, I, I kind of already questioned Brad Smith's vision if you want to put Call of Duty on a device as crippled as a Nintendo Switch. Like, that thing I was is wondering how it would run. two generations behind yeah. current tech. Um, yeah. Fair point. So Maybe it's single player only, they're thinking. Because, yeah, I don't know how a Switch would keep up with everything else if you're talking about a multiplayer environment. Well, the, yeah, the... I really don't know how that's going to go. But I mean, here's the storm. Man, I don't know. I, someone asked me yesterday, and I was just like, I, I am uncertain. Like, I, I don't think it can get worse. I don't think you, Heroes of the Storm could get possibly that much less support than it already does. But, um, like, in terms of it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so much... There's a lot to think of because, like, I, the the point that keeps getting thrown around that under Microsoft everything won't need to be a billion dollar, you know, mega giant, is true, and I agree with that point, and and it with that comes a lot of I think the seeds of a lot of hope of this acquisition. Right. Um, what that means for Heroes of Storm, man, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, uh, the leadership tried everything in their power to absolutely murder that game, um, and I feel like it still exists just by almost by accident or by the just the sweat of the team that somehow wins arguments to continue supporting it yeah i wonder um, about that sometimes i would love to be yeah in, and this is based on no inside no i i agree yeah. like all we all we can do is speculate on that because no one's saying but it does feel that way um on the I, call I of duty side i would actually argue there's a chance what he means or what would come of this would be the current mobile version of call of duty is is their biggest revenue generator in the call of duty franchise by miles like it is huge especially in asia but in here in particular uh in western countries that game is very very popular on mobile there's no reason that couldn't run just fine on a switch and if you're playing in portable mode it would look great if you're playing it under tv eh, of course it's not going to be like a you know a, a modern call of duty game but i think they could they could get away with that and i think that's what he's talking about it's like some of these free-to-play experiences or games that are already gigantic revenue generators put them on the switch why not and they've already made, I mean, Phil, Phil Spencer years or maybe a year ago said, uh, I don't know if he said they talked to Nintendo or they want it, they would love this or whatever it was, but they would love to have Game Pass, aka xCloud, running on Switch. Like, let people have a client there so that the Switch is their portable, you know, device to run xCloud cloud gaming. I would love that. That would be great. I do that now on my phone as it is, and I have a little controller thing for it, and it's kludgy as hell, and I'd much rather be doing it on a on a device like that so i you know do you feel like that's realistic though like nintendo seems so guarded mm -hmm. uh, like like that requires a uh a trust in the internet that nintendo has never once exhibited yeah True. nintendo is really bad at online stuff even just things that other everybody has had figured out forever like sending friend requests like oh yeah, yeah. you need this 18 digit code well, <laughs> share that with point. your friends <laughs> <laughs> thanks nintendo <laughs> it is the worst it's the worst you're say, not wrong at, at this point it feels like it's it, it's intentional it's a goal of theirs to like i I, th I think it is under a in my opinion misguided attempt at keeping children safe yeah but I don't think we can claim that they don't know what they're doing anymore because it's clearly intentional. Right. <laughs> like, no, I agree. You don't come up with a hell system like that without intentionally making it so difficult. They are weird about it. They always have been. I don't know why that is. It feels super counterintuitive, and yet they're Nintendo, and they sell a million things, and we all love them. And all we can do is talk about Kirby all week because freaking Kirby's on a car. <laughs> that thing's so weird. It's so what weird. What even is Kirby? I'm Kirby pretty excited. Isn't, Kirby isn't real. Kirby can't hurt you. I am left... <laughs> I am legit excited about that game because you're you're telling me you've got like a human civilization minus the humans. Uh, it looks like Last of Us one or something, and Kirby's rolling around saving the world in there. I'm in. I'm all in. Uh, I laughed out loud when he turned into a, a bedding machine and shot juice cans at people. I, I laughed. <laughs> I love Kirby. I love him. So I'm all in. But this that's the Nintendo dichotomy. It's like on the one hand. We adore them. Some of the greatest franchises of all time, the most influential games ever made. And to this day, it's difficult to argue with any of the top 10 games of all time being mostly Nintendo titles. Like, it's just the way it is. And so many other games that we love are influenced by them. 
And then on the other hand, they're like, here's your friend code. Go go bang your head against the wall and wish you were dead. Like it's just a weird it's a weird <laughs> thing. Oh, and here oh, here's our store, which is the the most uh kludgy, messy, slow, bad performing, like literally hard to navigate piece of garbage ever. But you'll use it and you'll get games here and you'll love you know, like it's just so weird. I just don't understand them. But anyway, I wanted to get to this point. I don't think it's that crazy that Call of Duty couldn't show up on there in its modern form, and here's why. If you buy control for the Switch, which you'll pay forty nine bucks for, if you buy Hitman three which you'll pay full price for. Those are on the Switch, but they're cloud-based. So they already do this. Uh, and I don't know who's doing that. I wouldn't do it. It seems like a... I'm not going to pay 49 bucks for a game I'm only ever going to play on the cloud. That seems insane to me. At least right now it does. And um, that's why I don't think um, Stadia is long for this world because that's kind of their model as well. Um, but if I wanted to play the new Marvel's, of, uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy game, I can do that on a Switch, but I'm paying 49 bucks for a cloud version of the game, not one running off the, the SD card inside the device. So they can do that stuff, and they already are doing that stuff with different titles. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't do it with some Blizzard stuff. Like, why? why could, well, I guess Overwatch is already on the Switch, isn't it? Is there a Switch version of that game? I think it's locked at 30. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's, I mean, yes, you know, it's it, it, it performs fine. But point being, I, you know, I don't think, it, I don't think these are the, the, the barriers that we think they are. The one big barrier with Nintendo is um, I don't think they want a massive competing console brand selling a service like xCloud on that device because then a bit yeah, in in that was, yeah that's what they yeah, don't that want. was my point yeah um, i think it's okay on a game by game basis but i don't think nintendo's gonna be like yeah come on in set up shop yeah competitor yeah <laughs> it's just not their it's not their vibe you know although uh once again sony doing weird stuff not only is the show available on uh on uh on game pass their baseball game that they've that's been a sony exclusive forever I was like, wait, um, we're available on Sony? Yeah, well, it's a, <laughs> it's available on on Game Pass, but it's also now coming to the Switch. They got pre-orders for it. They announced it earlier this week. So there's just like a weird, it's little stuff, okay, not major things, but a weird, some crossover stuff. We're in a weird transition era, uh, era right now. And in the meantime, we're still kind of doing what we do. Like we're all, you know, very excited about Aloy next week. We're going to play her new adventure. And it's just like the old days. You just buy it and you play it. And you don't worry about it. And there's no microtransactions that I know of. And you just play that game and you're good. But on the other hand, people are streaming a Plague Tale Innocence on their Switch for who knows why. And they paid 60 bucks for that. And on the other hand, some other guy's playing on his old crappy browser on his notebook. And he's playing Game Pass all day because it's cheap and it's easy. And then there are people playing WoW and we'll never leave. Like we're just in a weird, it's a weird time. Maybe it means that everybody can kind of do whatever the hell they want to do right now. And they all hope they can stay in their own little corners. But I feel like the industry wants to take us somewhere. And Brad Smith wants to take us somewhere, <laughs> wherever wherever that may be. Uh, he goes take on to say, to oh, go ahead. Paradise City. Yeah, take me down to Paradise City. Yeah, Why not? I'd love to go to Paradise City. Let's go. Especially the racing game. Uh, it says here, um, let's see. Uh, here's the important stuff in the blog about COD. It says, first, some commenters have asked whether we will continue to make popular content like Activision's Call of Duty available on competing platforms like Sony PlayStation. The obvious concern is that Microsoft could make the title exclusive to the Xbox console, undermining opportunities for Sony PlayStation users. To be clear, Microsoft will continue to make Call of Duty and other popular Activision Blizzard titles available on PlayStation through the term of any existing agreement with Activision. He might go, oh, there it is. There's the hook, right? But then he says... And we have committed to Sony that we will also make them available on PlayStation beyond the existing agreement and into the future so that Sony fans can continue to enjoy the game they love. Uh, we are also interested in taking similar steps to support Nintendo's successful platform. We believe this is the right thing for the industry, for gamers, and for our business. Now, if he is to be believed, Sony fans should have nothing to worry about if they like Call of Duty there. I think you're probably going to be fine for the foreseeable future. Uh, I just hope you get a good Call of Duty next year because this year's was bad. This is a very bad game. It's not good. Didn't live up to my high standards of what I think a Call of Duty game should be. Just saying. And I got a free code and I'm still shitting on it. So take that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just haven't played it and yeah, I don't plan to. I guess so. But um, obviously a lot of this is just like, hey, regulators, don't don't give us a hard time language, right? But 
I don't know. Do we take any positivity out of this in terms of World of Warcraft or Diablo or the future of Overwatch or any of these things? Do these have? Do you think this has any real bearing on? I don't know the future of that stuff. What do you think, Joss? Well, I mean, not so much about like the the Blizzard side of things, but I do find it funny that they're like, "Hey, don't worry, regulators, we're totally not gonna like wall this stuff off. Instead, we're gonna take over everywhere. Mm. We're gonna get Microsoft in everything." Mm. But that's not worrisome. Oh, well, that's <laughs> like, a good point. Come on, Nintendo, just get on our platform. Come on, Sony, what about you? Like. Yeah, you know what? That's that a really good point. My eyebrows a little. Yeah, because they are <laughs> they are saying all this from a certain perspective of now we own a bunch of big stuff. Yeah, so we want you, it all yeah. open within our within our space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once again, it's like obviously they have a stake in this. This isn't them being altruistic and going, "All right, now we're all, now that we've purchased this, yeah. our goal was just to give it away. You all just have fun, and that's not what they're doing. You know, they want us to pay them money and. And however we pay them. So, yes, there is that is reasonable skepticism to have. But for the most part, they've been pretty consistent. I will give them credit. Over the last couple of years, under the leadership in the Xbox division anyway, Phil Spencer, it feels like they've been pretty consistent with uh, what they claim to do, what they ended up doing, and then how they followed through. Um, some of that we have yet to see some of the big results from, like this uh, – acquisition of bethesda hasn't really Mm -hmm. yielded anything yet other than you know they stuck to their commitment to put uh death loop on playstation 5 exclusively and they did uh you know there's i I think they've been honorable in terms of that stuff but you know who knows who knows what the what the future is going to be probably the future they want is me paying some monthly sum of money to play video games that they make i think that's pretty much it well, then I guess the future is now because I'm already doing that. Yeah, same, right? Like, we all like Game Pass. Game Pass has been great. There's been a lot of uh, people freaking out, and he hasn't addressed this directly, but freaking out about a uh, price increase in uh, in Game Pass. And I think I'd probably say there will be a price increase at some point. I don't think there are any rush to do it, though. I mean, I'm not sure why I'm paying as much as I am now paying for Netflix uh, compared to the value proposition mm. of something like Game Pass. Yeah, good point. I almost canceled Netflix the other day. I, I did too. I'm, yeah. I'm like Ozark is over and I'm like, why am I still paying for you? And yeah. You're up to $15 now. Like, yeah, I'm real close. You don't even have office. That's like 20 anymore. for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's Canadian. Your, your, yeah, your money yeah. is weird. Your money is weird. You have space money. You have, you have holes in the middle of your coins. I can't figure it out. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, I, when I got a cup of Timmy's on my way back from Jocelyn's wedding, I got the coin you're talking about, and there's just a different color piece of metal yeah. in the middle. I don't know. Oh. They got They're loonies, loonies, and toonies, and boonies. What what else you got up there? You got the, the, the love of God, please. Oh, that's it. Please expand south, Tim Hortons. Please. <laughs> you do have really good coffee. Yeah. Why aren't they down here? I heard no. There's one in the. Uh, there's one there's in some, Washington. There's like right around the border. We're slowly infiltrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's like some in like North New York and yeah. yeah. There's a couple of them. Yeah, I always want to know what the big deal is. I've never been to one, so I'd like to know what the big whoop is. You should come to it, Canada. It, it's like not to. like blow your mind good, but if like for like quick, I just need a coffee. It's like damn, this is good coffee. Every time Kim and I are like, you know, we should go to Canada. It's like a month they shut down the border. It's always then. <laughs> Is it they know they know I'm coming and they don't want me in or whatever? Yeah, that's a hundred percent it. <laughs> we have Mexico a strict no Scott say, Johnson policy. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna walk in there and make fun of their money and their shirts and their and their accents. <laughs> but you been are. We you. all know yeah. that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> and you're probably gonna put it up on the internet. <laughs> probably. That's a good hey, point, buddy. Gar- er, Garrett Scott here in Canada. Yeah. Look at these. Look at these stupid. Look at the stupid money. Yeah. How's like it? I can see you through their five dollar bill. And yeah. it's all these colors. What's that about? Yeah, it's yeah. so we can tell what's in our wallet, Scott. I'm gonna go I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go get some poutine. How's it going, A? Eh? You know, and then million hits right that's there. I can tell what's in my wallet too. The 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 fifties and the one hundreds are much cleaner than everything else that's clearly been places I don't want to think about. It's true. You know I imagine I, having fifties and hundreds in cash <laughs> in your wallet. <laughs> When my dad was uh, running arcades, it was this is an old stereotype of of arcades and then payphones and that sort of thing. But we would we would have to go to the arcade all the time and unjam machines that people were cramming Canadian coins in. It was a nightmare. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Most people think most people think the reason that the, that arcades changed to tokens 
uh, was to keep you in the arcade. It did have that effect because you couldn't spend them anywhere else. But um, that wasn't the main reason. The main reason was because these Canadian and any other kind of foreign currency were jamming up these machines. In some cases, you had to replace the whole door mechanism because a Canadian quarter was just all crammed up in that thing and uh, wouldn't work. And so, yeah, a little side, fun side note from my old arcade days. Canadian money was the devil. <laughs> now it's fine. It's fine. You guys are great. We love you guys. There's nothing wrong with you guys. Uh, anyway, what else? Um, I don't know. That kind of covers it. It's a it's an interesting um, thing to watch a giant company make a giant acquisition that now has to have giant scrutiny. And I don't know if any of this is going to actually help or if it ever helps. But when this starts to get, you know, through various countries and territories uh approval which mainly mainly the the focus here is going to be uh US the EU and Australia and uh I don't think China I don't know how it works in China they have different rules it's all very weird there um but whatever all of that comes out I would I'm going to be very curious to see how it plays out cuz it's a very very large amount of money and it it could make a whole lot of people go ah that's a monopoly, what you're doing there. And uh, I don't 100% disagree. Could be kind of monopolistic a little bit, you know, or is. I don't know. That's probably not even a, that's probably not even a controversial thing to say. It's very monopolistic. They're buying everything. So they're going to get a lot of scrutiny and we're all going to have to sit and sit and groove on it. Uh, all right. Yeah, there's still Stony. There's still Nintendo. There's still Valve. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be concerned about a mega corporation becoming even more mega, but. Like I think in the world of uh, monopoly concern, I don't think it's enough to stop this from happening. Who do you think is the most monopolistic company ever? If you had to pick one today that is currently operating and doing so with relative impunity, who who do you think is getting away the, the with one, it? The one that makes me mad from an anti-consumer standpoint is is just kind of EVs in general and, and Tesla's proprietary charging. Mm. I think that is... Uh, yeah dangerous and anti-consumer yeah that should be standards right if, if my car is about to die i i don't go oh crap i need to find the specific gas station with the right uh, gas nozzle that fits my car that kind of thing really like creeps me out yeah i like standards uh, as well i'm kind of the same that's a really good example actually um i'm trying to think like you know it's easy it's easy to point to social media companies and say they but that's kind of our problem you know, if Facebook continues to be whatever Facebook is because we because people go there. And I say we, I don't mean the three of us. We may have all, I don't know how, where we are with Facebook, but, yeah. but you know, enough people, Facebook, well, they did have a giant drop in people. But my point is like people are, are, the, are the fuel there. We are the product. So if a social media uh, site is succeeding and we don't like the way they're behaving, it's kind of on us. Like without us, yeah. they're nothing. So. Just yeah, like, I just uh, yeah. I mean, look at chat. Amazon, Disney. Yeah, Disney's my vote. Companies. Oh, Disney's Disney a good... owns a lot of media. Like media, you don't realize. Yeah. Like you, Disney. When you think of it, is all like cartoons and Marvel and whatever. But like they've got their hands in a lot of different kind of media, including like news agencies, like all kinds of stuff. Like Disney creeps me out. <laughs> yeah, and they also get to they get to double dip. Like they own, uh, you know, just in the streaming market, they've got. Disney Plus. They also now own Hulu. And Hulu's like their touchstone in the movie days where they can put kind of the dirty stuff over on Hulu. But they also get to double dip because other stuff happens on Hulu. There's a, a new Futurama coming. They ordered 20 episodes. Super excited about it. It's all, all I could talk about for a couple of days. And it's all coming to Hulu. And technically, Disney gets to now partake in other people's IPs that they don't own directly. Um, it's It's weird. And I don't even think through the Fox acquisition they got them because they ended up over at Cartoon Network, and that's Viacom. I mean, it's all it's, they're all in bed with each other as it is. But yeah, Disney's freaking big, man, and they want everything you have. And if you're entertained by something, they'll buy it, and then they'll own it, and then we'll love some of it. You know, we'll go. Hey, like Disney's the big one. <laughs> like, if you're a nerd, I think Disney comes to mind. I, I think if you are uh, uh, like consumer minded, I think Amazon comes to mind i think if you're data minded facebook and google come to mind like it kind of like there's there's major offenders in a lot of different arenas yeah i agree um all right let's get to uh an email and then on to what we're playing hello there do this in reverse order today email us at the instance at gmail.com if you would because sam did and he had this to say this is an interesting 
uh, take. He says, hi, guys. After the Metaverse slash VR episode and then the discussion of it again with Patrick, I was thinking, oh, wait, this may have to do this when we talk about him. <laughs> we invoke him. We have to play his laugh. Uh, I was thinking that it seems like most of the discussion you were having on the show is around how you think this type of technology is going to affect our day-to-day lives in the future versus how it would change gaming. Scott's example of virtual meetings, I tend to agree with Garrett. Zoom works really well, so why would we want it virtually to be in the same or virtually to be in the same room with everyone? However, when I think about the same idea in gaming terms, I find it much more exciting. If I could virtually go run a dungeon in first person with my friends all fighting alongside me, that sounds quite a bit cooler, I think. Anyways, uh, just wondering what you think the potential for VR is to become more prevalent in gaming, or is there a reason why the conversation specifically on a gaming podcast is mostly centered on how it won't become part of our lives the way the internet has? Thanks and keep up the great work, Sam. Well, no, I agree. We, I mean, we were, our, our focus on that discussion was mostly metaverse, you know, was the, was the overall. So metaverse means everything, not just gaming. Um, however, having played uh, about three hours, four hours of a, a VR-based MMO this week called Zenith. You guys heard of Zenith? You heard of this? No? No. Okay. <laughs> this thing's out on Steam and uh, Quest versions of it that are standalone. And uh, I played the Quest version on a Quest 2, and it's a full-blown MMO. Like, bring up your inventory thing. Here's your here's your paper doll dude What you can put you know gear on and compare all this. These gloves are better than the last ones, and those just dropped off that random mob, and you're killing random mobs, and it's like this uh, mix of of futuristic and fantasy and so there's wizards with spells but the wizard also has a couple of guns he can use it seems kind of crazy but it works <laughs> um it reminds me of you know what it's like it's like um what's that can- mmo people like that got canceled uh you're shit. gonna have to be way more specific wildstar, wildstar thank you oh wow okay no, yeah. you don't need to be more specific yeah that was it it's I like wildstar Mi- mix of fantasy and science fiction kind of stuff anyway it's first person so you're looking at yourself. You have to reach down, grab your guns, pull them out, shoot. Um, there's flying. You can climb walls, and you do it physically. I had a blast in there, and I got to level, level like level nine. And I'm not here to tell you that it was the most refined experience I've ever seen in an MMO. It certainly isn't. But the basics are there. There's questing and talking to quest givers and going to do the quest, and there's world events, and, and and a whole bunch of people can do them together, and you can hear each other talking. You can group up if you want to. and like It's kind of crazy how well it worked. And so I was I was kind of doing what this dude what Sam's suggesting is that that the future of gaming has a connection here. What it makes me want is something that's more like an organic D&D group. You're in there with your best friends and you're uh you're physically doing the stuff that you would normally describe and 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 you know that a GM would tell you about. So who has the rope and how do I connect it to that tree so we can swing across this chasm and not die and there does, that, even, you know, go ahead. does that actually make D and D better? I don't because, know if it makes I mean, it better. I feel like D and D lives in the world to me of reading books, right? Like everyone kind of has this own picture in their head, and if you put that into a like a virtual space, doesn't it take away some of that like fantasy? Maybe. I mean, all every fantasy game I ever played is some every RPG I should say I've ever played is some evolution of D, right they're all mm-hmm. they all come from le- that the leveling the behind the scenes dice rolling the, the hit chances all those things are all pulled out of out of that and i agree with you like you lose something because imagination has no end and no limit and no yeah. technical cap whereas this in theory would but the concept here is that you know even even the best D game often there's a, a a map out in front of you with little figures representing your character and a corridor that the DM made and placement of monsters that he decided where they went. I'm saying give a DM tools in virtual space that let him do that so that you're fully immersed in the same kind of thing. You still have his imagination and you give him enough assets to be able to realize all of that. And now you've got that more tactical, I'm in your world, but I haven't lost the imagination thing. I think there's something there. I'm not saying we're there yet, but I think that's that's entirely possible. Now, whether it'll ever you know fully replace that, I'm not saying that. You know, there's always going to be something about sitting around a table with your friends and eating Cheetos and poorly drink decisions and things like that and having a good time. <laughs> I get it, but um, I just think there's some there's something 
to be said for that. And especially after experiencing some of this this week, I played a bunch of Demio, which is a a dungeon crawler turn-based game, which you can play with friends. And that is a freaking blast to be able to do that stuff in virtual space because you're just it's just so tangible. You're picking things up, you're moving your dudes, you're you're changing your views in, in dynamic ways and and the game is a is a good game and you're playing card, you'd like that. And there's cards in it. <laughs> I said that my Hearthstone friends, oh you'd like it. There's cards in it. Um <laughs> I, I don't like card games uh, for the most part. <laughs> that, I know that's what's so funny. Every time you tell me that, it just I laugh and and die a little because I'm like, but he. It's a lot of work to learn card games, yeah. um, mm. and I don't want to do that work. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, like I, you I just want to play Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, I just want to play Hearthstone. I'm at a point in Hearthstone where I don't want to learn new Hearthstone cards. Like <laughs> if I could just like hit a button and I know them already, as opposed to sit there and research. Reveal season, I hate it. I can't. It's my least favorite part of doing the Angry Chicken. Oh wow! Right. Yeah, they just announced a mini set, and you can just hear Garrett grumbling. Or it's mini like, set uh, time again. I, I, I don't cards. like going card by card. I, I really, it, it, I find it laborious. Do you have any uh, hot? Either of you have a hot take on Celestalon taking on a more systems role there at the team? That seemed kind of cool. Heard about that yesterday. I am learning about this now. Oh. Oh yeah, no, I'm super excited about that. I think it's going to be great. I think he's got a lot of really good ideas, and I'm glad that he's in a. Like moving into a, a like a leadership role, like good for him. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to find. I, the, I will say it doesn't surprise me to hear that the dude is. Um, oh, he's awesome. Wicked smart. No, he's super smart. Mm-hmm. I love that guy. He also has an amazing EDM uh, music taste, and I always love uh, listening to the, to the stuff he recommends. That's a total non video game thing, but I do like his taste in dance music. Uh, hold on a second. Let's see if I can find the actual new title he has. Uh, okay, there it is. I think he's the features lead. Twitter, something went wrong. Try reloading. It's not working, Twitter. <laughs> Great. Twitter's having problems. But anyway, yeah, it's like a, it's a more complex systems level leadership position. I think that's awesome. Good for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know he listens to the show, so we're excited for you, dude. All right, moving on. Uh, let's talk about some games that we played this week. Um, I spent almost all my time in VR because I'm doing a project with CBS News. That's coming soon. In fact, right after this, I have reshoots for some B-roll. i um, very excited about how that's going to turn out. It's kind of a cool thing I got to be involved with. Anyway, as a result, picking up a lot of stuff, trying different things, and I uh, played a lot of that Demio game, played it with friends, Brian Ibbett, Steven Schleicher, a couple other Frog Panther types. Total blast. Can't recommend it enough. It might be VR's first gaming killer app. If you like if you like RPGs and turn-based combat, um, it's insane. It's so much fun. Uh, and then I bought a cooking game called Clash of Chefs. Now, normally I see Clash of anything, and I'm like, get me out of this mobile nightmare, like whatever that is, right? <laughs> uh, but it's great. It's like, think Diner Dash, but I'm in there. So it's like, guy waiter comes to the thing, says, here's your order. I'm like, all right, that's a burger, and it's got bacon and cheese on it. So I got to cook the burger over here. I'm going to reach over here, dump some fries into the cooker thing, like this very physical sort of whatever, and you got you know, customer satisfaction meter that's going down slowly. So you got to try to hurry and get their food to them. And if you grab the drink too fast, it'll spill. And, uh, you can make pizzas and you throw the dough down, pick it up, throw it down again, roll it out. Like it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I played that for like three and a half hours before I was, uh, started feeling sick and I had to get out. Anyway, <laughs> it was great. Welcome to my world. Yeah. Scott. Welcome to your world. <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, if you like those like t- um, time based or not time based, well, I don't know what they're even called anymore. But the games like you know cooking games or uh, well, overcooked. Not, yeah, overcooked's <laughs> a good example. In fact, it has a competitive mode where I could you know my daughter could put her old headset on and her and I could have a head to head fight, and that literally puts her Shit across battle. the way in the in the um, in the restaurant. So she's like a, across from me in this space. And so are, you can like watch her and what she's doing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I can hear what she's cutting over there. And if she dropped her knife, I can hear it hit the floor. And anyway, now question. Yeah, does she have legs? Uh, <laughs> in this one, it's uh, the competitor. So my body is full body to me, in my view, hands and everything. But her uh, avatar is just a floating head and and hands working. <laughs> so there's no body of at all. It is. It's just the so hands. Creepy. <laughs> yeah, they didn't fill in the body part because they're just tracking the head and the things. So it's just that. So it looks like like a like a psycho version of like Rayman over there, just like no limbs. 
Cool. Oh boy, really, yeah. really selling it. Yeah, it's great though. Yeah, I, I, isn't reality <laughs> See, in the title of this genre? Me. Yeah, that's where it loses me when you when you don't actually have like full animated avatars of other people like the yeah. facebook thing where they're all missing legs the like no, it just it's so creepy yeah i'm gonna be honest <laughs> I don't like Scott, it. I'm, I'm 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 gonna lay the smack down i feel like uh everything you've mentioned from vr in the last like month or so i'm i'm i can't help but look at it and go wh why is vr getting worse like, i'm telling you right now i, worse I realize you're saying that five years ago i realize what you're saying but i could not disagree more. I think here's the problem, though, and you just illustrated it beautifully. Without you being able to be in there and see Demio for yourself, you would. I would feel the same way. Like there is some there, VR is impossible to sell without a headset on your head. It just is. You can't show it without people going, oh, geez, look at that. The guy has no feet. Or I mean, I can see that there's no legs and think that sucks. Like, I see that just <laughs> fine. I was talking about, who is it? I was, um, Jeff Kanata, I guess. He's a giant VR nerd. And we talked about this one time. And it's, it's this disconnect of once you're in there doing it, you realize, oh, my gosh, the potential is enormous. But when you just see it happening on some screen or a stream or someone's YouTube, it's like, eh, whatever. They're just moving oh, yeah, things no, around. Oh, yeah, dude, um, playing... What the hell? Uh, 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 Star Wars Squadrons in VR is probably a top three gaming experience for me. It's yeah. one of the coolest things ever because it looks amazing and it looks like I'm actually sitting in a freaking cockpit. Yeah. But seeing Rayman Chef's uh, wobble, like, I'm just like, <laughs> shit, Alex came out three years ago and looks a billion times cooler than this. Well, there is some of that. I, I'll give you that. I think that, okay, so the Zenith MMO I was talking about, you get full bodies and you get full... Um, Everybody's got a you know a full avatar and you're and you wear transmog and you and your armor changes and like it's like a you know legit MMO in that regard. And while people move a little weird, a little floaty when they run, <laughs> you get their all you get their full bodies. So there's something. Yeah, there. no, that's fair. I mean, yeah. I mean, and people run cycles look floaty in current MMOs. Like, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, every time you jump, it looks like suddenly someone yanked up on the marionette strings. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's just, it's, it's weird. I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of stuff I'm seeing now is not really like targeted at like traditional gamers, whatever that is, mm -hmm. like to, to just for the sake of conversation here and keeping it short and not trying to get into a genre of what gamer is what type of gamer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, like all, all the, I don't know, like but Facebook has, has just completely soured me. Like, I'm just like, boy, you all don't get it at all. You're so out of touch. You're, you're doing a horrible job selling this. You don't know how to market this. You don't even know what you're making. Well, um, good news. It, just, it, it <clears throat> makes me um, really trepidatious of new stuff because I think uh, there's a lot of money being thrown around because of a word. And the oh, word yeah. Is meta. There's a no there's one a really knows what they're what they're aiming for. There's a crash, not a crash. There's a bubble coming, um, whether we like it or not, um, where. Well, it's already kind of happening. They lost, what, four billion dollars in revenue or in uh, value last week because their revenue sh was short or whatever. Although they sold a billion dollars worth of content within Quest, other parts of Facebook are suffering real bad because people are finally either leaving or mad or, you know, there's other issues at play. So yeah, it's well, not going to... Quest gonna... has a heading, right? Like, you can under, kind of understand Quest. It is, a, it is a thing that's already in consumers' hands. Yeah. And you know how to work with the hardware and you know how to make products for it. Right. I, I think Meta really has a, a difficulty in, like, ease of understanding. Like, no one can simply tell me what it is. Yeah. You can tell me all the things it possibly could be, and it sounds like an NFT pitch. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Nobody, you're if not we wrong. If don't believe in meta, then we're all going to get rich. No, you're, to <laughs> you're totally right. They annoy me for changing their names to a thing that they hope is the big next catchword, but no one really knows what that catchword means. We all kind of have ideas of what that what a metaverse is but a metaverse is really just uh, honestly yeah. this is 1995 and people calling the internet the information superhighway stop calling it shit like that and just start building the damn thing like that's all it is because all that we're really talking about is a big visual tangible inner inner working internet it's a new kind of internet that's what they're aiming for that is what when people say that that's what they should mean some of them don't know what they mean but be, leave that nomenclature of, of far away as far as I'm concerned. I freaking hate it. And if, if, if someone walked up to you today and said, oh, yeah, I found this good deal on a, on a new uh, helmet. And you'd say, oh, for biking, cool, where'd you get it? Uh, I, I got it via the information superhighway. You'd punch him in the nuts. <laughs> 
right? No, I would just, all right, I'm going to delete you from uh, my contacts. Yeah, I'm not going uh, to talk to that person anymore. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, it's, just, it's just, yeah, it's it's very strange. Like, I don't know. Um, they're, they're selling an idea and it's not, they have nothing tangible that you can, yeah, you can mess you, with. You, but I feel like wrong. it's actively hurt VR games. Like, I feel like VR games are getting worse and cheaper mm. um, as a result. Like, I thought I thought we were pushing there for a little bit. There's some cool shit. Alex and Squadrons was like, "Oh yeah, woo! I want this." Yeah. And now I'm just like, I don't know. This is, why didn't you render the legs? <laughs> <laughs> is it that hard? Uh, I don't know. It's ev- it's evolving. We're in the flip phone st- phone stage. Uh, we don't know where we're headed, but we'll get there. Yeah, we'll it's, get there. it's interesting. The, the, the whole there's some interesting thoughts today. When you brought up that MMO, I was just thinking like that that could be cool. It, really it is could. cool. It's just a matter yeah. of like, is it is it worth the like when we we're talking about the difference between playing uh, tabletop role playing in VR versus playing it on a tabletop? Like, I I think that kind of to me it made me go. I think it's all just a, a conversation of like your comfort zone. Like, how much is it a relaxing thing for you? Because I don't really think VR is relaxing. Um, it, it like you, you know, it, it, as easy as it yeah, is. Yeah, if you like, want to chill here. in an MMO after a long day, yeah, <laughs> do you yeah, really want to be running around and flailing your arms in your living room? Maybe yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the physical movement. Like, like mm-hmm. the most I've enjoyed VR is vehicle-based games because, uh, like, I like I like kind of being sedentary and interfacing either with a joystick well, lots or of butt steering sitting. wheel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, butt sitting, exactly, yeah. exactly, but. Like and and it, it, even with like more widely adopted games, like do I feel like playing on the PC or do I feel like getting the hell out of the seat that I spend my entire life in and lounging on the couch and playing a console game? Like that's why I still have consoles. Mm-hmm. I get like, like Same. some people ask, like, why do you have consoles? You have an amazing PC, and it's like because sometimes I want to lay down, yeah, and relax. Oh yeah, um, no, and, I love it. I love a good couch session where I just can yeah. hold a controller and whatever. I I I feel you. It's it's uh, for the record before anyone emails because I know this already. None of the experiences I just described. Demio, Clash of Chefs, uh, the the MMO Zenith, they all are sit down experiences if you want them to be. You don't have to walk around. You don't have to do any of that. You can just sit on your butt and you know, and and especially the MMO. There's so there's then a, it's motion control, kind of, <laughs> which I mean, also is not my favorite thing. <laughs> it sort of is. Like you're still, you know, I'm still grabbing those guns, aiming them, firing them. I'm still reaching out to grab the loot and put it in my bag. You actually kind of put it behind your head and. It like mimics putting a you know a piece of gear in the back of your bag or whatever, and um, so there's there's all of that, and these are things I would normally do obviously with a keyboard and hit E and you know W A S D my way out of there and aim my mouse that direction like you know the physicality of it is 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 more than you're used to with a computer, but there it's not like this thing's some rigorous you know it's not like playing Beat Saber which is still amazing Beat Saber if there is a killer app in in that VR space, it's probably Beat Saber, and Beat Saber is still very physical and a good workout, and you know it's fun to listen to American Idiot while you slash cubes in half. It's a good time, but uh, yeah, we're at the we're at the beginning of whatever it is, and until they're the size of you know sunglasses, we're probably not where we think we want to be yet. That's what they should have named Meta, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is, <laughs> we're no Facebook longer Facebook. Announced, whatever it is, yeah, we've changed sure our name it is, to but it'll whatever be something. it is. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, there you go. Hey, Jocelyn, how's Lost Ark? Because I'm loading that up today. How is Lost Ark? Tell me about it. It is I, like, honestly, I have never glittered so much within the first 10 minutes of a game as I have in this one. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I love it. Oh, wow. OK. I mean, it's all the talk right now. It's all anybody wants to play. It seems like uh, I mean, when we're this game's been out for six years in Asia, parts of Russia, and now si- suddenly it's in the US and we're like, sweet, brand new thing overwhelmingly positive reviews on steam like it just seems like it's the place to be at the moment so would you agree with yeah. that yeah i mean i i can see the appeal it's very like diablo-y with like tons of big waves of bad guys and you have these crazy powerful spells that like one shot giant groups which is cool um it's got a couple of little things that i don't love so much like if you're like, I, okay, so I always play female characters in video games. And so if I want to be a warrior, you can't. <laughs> like they've, they've like gender locked some classes, which is like, like you say, it is, it is like whatever a five or six year old game, but it just, it 
feels weird and backwards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like in is it an like eighty in, year old game? Because I'm pretty well, sure my grandparents were the last people that thought like girls can't do certain. Yeah, things. like girls can't. So girls can't be warriors. Guys can't be uh, mages. Mm. <laughs> no wizards for you. <laughs> Sounds... Which is just it's just weird and feels kind of backwards. Yeah, I are they saying women are weak like... and men are stupid? Yeah. <laughs> Basically. I mean, at least they're being mean to both. <laughs> don't you guys? But don't you guys feel like those evil kind of opportunity in their in their meanness? <laughs> yeah, in their meanness. Don't yeah, you guys feel like those social like social moray stuff in video games? Their Korean and Chinese development is kind of stuck in the '90s. It's weird. Like the the games, it, yeah. te- Technically, you know, like the technicality of the games are kind of great. Like that isn't the problem, but it does feel like they're still writing for dude bros and they're like there's a maturity that well, isn't there I mean, yet. yeah like it's tna everywhere with these tiny little waists and i love the costuming i will say i absolutely love it i know a lot of people don't like the like skimpy armor and stuff but like one thing i love about their aesthetic and that i'm seeing more and more and i i see in final fantasy a little bit too is there's a lot of that like really like intricate looking like swirly metal work and all of the spell effects are really cool looking and like i can get into it aesthetically but uh but yeah like i i don't know and maybe it's because i'm coming from like wow which i find doesn't have a lot of that (laughs) you know like spell effects and wow aren't great armor and wow is not great when you see it next to like i mean i can look freaking gorgeous yeah. in lost ark yeah. and still kick ass and i love that yeah. <laughs> and you then might... i go to wow and i'm like oh you look like you just slapped two polys on my boobs yeah <laughs> garrett garrett that makes me think jocelyn's gonna really like final fantasy 14 because <laughs> I, I think so yeah. yeah i was gonna ask i haven't played lost ark are the dudes like really hot too because that's the thing i was gonna say about final fantasy 14 is like uh <laughs> i'm not gonna lie uh some of the girls are really freaking hot in final yeah. fantasy 14 but like the dudes are too they they look like they walked out of a romance novel you can get like these really open low cut silk shirts for your for your bunny boy yeah and like, <laughs> like yeah it, they they definitely follow the hot boy aesthetic it's as like, well it's like the, a cw show is an mmo like everyone yes. in final fantasy 14 <laughs> is hot. so hot yeah. everyone yeah it's it it i, I it makes me sweaty <laughs> <laughs> wow wow this is good to know this is good to know my character I, i'm playing a dude total smoke show really <laughs> And are you, uh, I mean, yeah. I don't What are you? Are you a bunny man? You're not I'm a bunny a dude. I just okay. wanted an anime ass looking human. Well, you can I definitely make gonna, one of those in there. That's I'm going to sure. play an anime ass game. I'm going to lean into it. Yeah. Go all the way. I got, I got my emo hair circa when I was like, you know, 18. Like it's great. It's yeah. wonderful. Hang out in Lhasa Limsa Limpo or whatever it's called. That place. <laughs> Limsa Lominsa. I know. I hate God, the name. Uh, hey. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> so yeah, Lost Ark doing well. For the record, P- Path of Exile and Diablo 2, which it was chiefly based on, they also only let you choose one gender. And it sucked. We have technology now. Make multiple yeah. genders. It's not hard. It just seemed, yeah, it just seemed a little odd to me and a little out of touch. But I mean, the gameplay itself is is pretty good. Um, I don't love the key binds. I'm still kind of getting used to it. I want my abilities on like one, two, three, four, five. And they're like, no, that's for consumables, not your spells. And I'm like, again, what year is this? Yeah. Can, it, can you change them? How much control do you have over that? in there well, i don't know i haven't i haven't really dove into it that far to you know get it i just played for like two hours last night just to see what it was all about because it's like it like crashed steam like it's, oh, yeah. it's the new hotness this week for sure it's so a big deal yeah people yeah. have been talking about it for years and years and years i remember in 2015 my brother-in-law were like dude look at this it's gonna be great it's like diablo but more intense and baby and then nothing for six years of nothing and then seven almost seven years and bam here it is so mm-hmm Enjoy your old think, ass game. I think you'll, I think you'll like it, Scott. I yeah, really do. I bet I do. I the the yeah. the combat looks like my jam. So I'm, yeah, I'm in. I don't want to. Uh, I'm a little nervous about all the micro crap that's in it, but I hear they toned a lot of that down for the U.S. release, which is what probably mm. what took it so long. Because over there, it's just like a, it's more of a store than a game. Yeah, um, I haven't. Uh, I didn't notice any of that. All I know is that like the um, founders crate things that you could buy to get early access to the game no. had like extra currencies in them. Mm. But like I, I haven't. It hasn't shoved the store in my face. If that's a if that's a fear. That's good. 
Is, That's good. Yeah, I've just kind of been playing the game. And I did buy, obviously, because I had the early access. So I did buy one of the founders things. And even like with that, they don't even say like, hey, this is what you can use this currency for. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's the store. Yeah, <laughs> They're yeah. just like, oh, you want to play the game? Cool. Here's the game. <laughs> yeah, I figured since everyone else I know paid early, I'm just going to do the you know, basic free to play tonight and see what happens. I'm excited, though. Try it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Garrett. Uh, more Final Fantasy Hard Dungeons. Also, I heard your wife's playing now. Is that true? How'd you get her to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she saw a bunch of really cool non combat pets, and that's really all it takes. There you go. On an MMO. <laughs> nice. Because I know she played, I mean, she was pretty, she played WoW with you all the time, right? She was into it. Yeah, back in the day. She probably, I don't think she's played much since BFA. Mm. Um, but. Yeah. Her and uh, everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, she's not. She's not like into the the meta commentary of whether WoW is good or bad. She just eventually kind of just got bored. Just Stop fell off. Playing. Yeah. I think there's yeah, more of that uh, going on. People like to like the freaking out and the screaming, but I think there's more just falling off going on than people. Well, you know, that, than they know. Because yeah, you know, I mean, I've 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 fell off. I love WoW. I, I know I'll go back one day, but I'm I'm bored as crap, and I, I've yeah. uh, I've canceled my sub for the first time since WOD. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I haven't done that in so long. I'm trying to think. It may have been since vanilla that I... Oh, no, I had a card go bad once or go expire. <laughs> I could go bad. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's different, though. Like, when you just accidentally let a code expire, yeah. that's not the same as, like, actively stopping your subscription. Yeah. You know what sucked yeah. about that? you from getting that, that, that statue they sent out. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what sucked is I couldn't get the statue, and I was pissed. And uh, yeah. Anyway, somebody eventually yeah, I, sent I, I, me I, theirs, and then it broke in the mail. So that was good, good times. Yeah, no, I, I just really, I'm in an MMO mood, and uh, Final Fantasy is scratching that itch. I will probably be uh, in the mood. I'm not in the mood right now. It's weird. I'm not in the mood for any MMOs right now. I am in the mood for open world. So uh, better, no better time than Forbidden West, I suppose, to land. But um, yeah, more of that, please. That'd be great. The, 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 oh, so excited. Yeah. One more I'm, week. I'm, I'm yeah. Also experiencing like it's it's been it's been wild making content for it uh, oh for the game yeah yeah people are are really stoked and kind like this is the first time i've ever had success on youtube mm -hmm. and like the comments are on topic and i've only seen maybe <laughs> like four that were uh calling my character into question yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like people are just uh it's a good mix of people who are on the same journey i am like coming over from wow and people who have been playing final fantasy forever and are just like i mean this stoked is, that other people are paying attention stoked. to it yeah 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 but it also like it has this like if if um really old vampires were really nice uh. it's just like oh new youth and they just <laughs> want to tell you all about all the cool stuff and be your guide and and whisk you away into this world um it's been really it's been really freaking cool that's awesome yeah i kid and, and, and i just hear nothing but good things about the community and that, yeah, that i did have my is... first ass hat in a dungeon run the other day oh good they're probably x wow yeah. though remember that they probably I came said oh you must be from wow and they're like no i've been playing since from before i'm like you should try wow they're they have attitudes oh like they you. love you over there get over there <laughs> it's fantastic uh someone in the chat says that uh emma really in the chat says the um the gender lock is apparently in the road, uh, the roadmap to get removed and add. Mm. So that's cool. Maybe they're still, that's still under, you know, they're still, they're still, that, if they're actively saying, you're, if they're saying, hey, we're going to make Lost Ark this active endeavor and we're going to make some of these big changes, that makes me want to play more. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's awesome. But can yeah. I get ball cleavage as a man? Uh, <laughs> no. Although, if you want to see, um, <laughs> This is, um where's this going this is completely <laughs> orbit yeah i know i've already seen gameplay trailers so this is completely <laughs> off the track but i was for film sack we're watching uh wild things from the 90s 98 i believe and uh it's famous for lots of reasons we're gonna see if it's just even any good as a movie i'll withhold my comments till film sack but i wanted to say this did not go into there expecting to see kevin bacon's penis didn't expect it <laughs> It's just not a thing you go into a movie to expect, right? You don't go in there going, oh, you know what I'll see today? It'll be Kevin Bacon's penis. Nope, didn't have... <laughs> well, uh, prepare when you finally see the new Jackass, Scott. I oh, great. More wieners. <laughs> Some man wiener, a eh? Man, I've seen so many wieners on TV this week. <laughs> <laughs> what are you watching on TV? Euphoria! Euphoria. 
If oh. you're watching Euphoria, there that that first episode with the grandma. The first couple of episodes. Yeah. Oh my god! There, it, it, there's not as many now, but in the first couple of episodes, I'm like, Scott, what are you telling me to watch? Yeah. It's just wieners. I know. Everywhere. It's a lot of wieners. They're getting their revenge for all the boobs like for so many years. Twenty-five in one scene. I'm not even joking. Yeah, <laughs> that one at the strip strip club was a lot of wieners. Also. Uh, Cal, what's his name, in the front of his house with his wiener out. What the frick are we doing? What are we even doing? Uh, anyway. Yeah. Hey, Joss, did you ever watch the Spartacus series? Oh, that not. had a lot of wieners in it. If, if you want, yeah, a lot of attractive men just full frontal. Yeah, yeah. No, not really. And, and, you know, had their fair share of women, but they were not afraid to get the wiener out at all that was that was uh, i think like because that was a while ago too i was like this is the most equal opportunity just full-on nudity i've mm-hmm. ever experienced oh yeah. Uh, yeah and some of the schlockiest most over-the-top violence uh needless to say i recommend it highly yeah i kind of enjoyed <laughs> that show and i was really sad that the first guy passed away of cancer so so oh, early yeah I, oh man i haven't thought about that in a while yeah that sucked he was he was good in the he role. was in a he was in the most ripped shape of anyone's life and then Patri- uh, pancreatic cancer takes him in like two months. It was awful. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm going to cast shade here. Hold on, I'm I'm going in the background. Uh, what is this actor's name? I can never remember. I don't remember either. But he was only no, no, 31 no, no. or something. I'm going to say 32? the guy who the guy who sadly passed away who played Spartacus. He was like if Sam Worthington was an interesting actor. There you go. I, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. He had a future. It pisses me off. He's just getting started. F cancer. That's a great way to end the show today. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're done. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> F cancer, watch nudity. Yeah, watch nudity. <laughs> if you can get some wieners in, now's the time to do it. Um, I do want to uh, 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 quickly mention some patrons who help us out every month. Uh, for example, Justin Weyenberg. I want to thank him. I want to thank Dylan Davis and JT Westhouse or Westus. I think is how you say the name. Those guys are awesome, generous people who support us on our Patreon, which you can do also simply by going to patreon.com slash instance and support the show that you love. So get in there and get that taken care of, all right? Because we'd love to have you aboard. And there's still plenty of time this month to become a patron this month and get benefits exclusive to February. So check it out. That's patreon.com slash instance. Uh, I think that'll do it. Let's get around the corner real quick and ask what people are doing this week so uh, people can check it out. Garrett, you mentioned YouTube and other stuff. What's going on with you and your world? Oh, yeah. Uh, YouTube.com slash TV is where you can see my Final Fantasy fourteen coverage with Kyle Ferguson. We put up a brand new video two days ago uh, talking about how we finally understand the freaking class system in Final Fantasy fourteen, and kind of talked about how, um, how it does a lot of things different from what we're used to from things like World of Warcraft. Um, really, I, I had a personal kind of journey where I thought I wasn't going to like it as much, uh, and it turns out I was wrong, mm. much like most of the things in Final Fantasy fourteen. I didn't think I was going to like it that much, and I ended up going... Huh, this is pretty cool. Mm. So, um, yeah, if you want to hear that, if you're going through a similar journey like me and you're coming over from World of Warcraft and you want to learn like how Final Fantasy fourteen handles classes, youtube.com slash TV. Very so. nice. Very nice. Jocelyn, what's going on tonight? You streaming? What's happening? I'm hoping to. I'm just sitting, as I've been sitting here recording the instance, my neck is killing me. So <laughs> I'm I'm going to take some drugs and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can make it tonight. If I can't make it tonight, I'll definitely do it tomorrow night. But uh, yeah, uh, twitch.tv slash Joss plays. That's J-O-C-E plays. We're going to uh, take my first steps, literally my first steps. I've made my character, but I have not launched the game. So mm. yeah, first steps into Final Fantasy 14 to see what it's all about. Well, Listen, taking a week to make your character, uh, um, is actually under the average amount of time. Yeah, so you're doing fine. Don't worry about that. Uh, also, for the for the record, we did not give her a kink in the neck. The show she got that uh, earlier. She was just she's yes, just enduring yeah, it. Funny now. last night, and it just yeah, sitting here. I'm like, oh man. Yeah, she's just sitting here head. enduring the pain, which I uh, completely yeah. appreciate. And I also so have an time. exam tonight, so I know oh. I'm going to be sitting in front of my computer for another like two hours. Oh so. man, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. I'd, um, I'd say go for a walk, but I, I'm assuming it's cold outside. Uh, yes, it's, yeah, it's like minus two. <laughs> oh my <laughs> Which lord! Which isn't that bad. But. Oh yeah, that's not bad <laughs> at all. That's, that's like thir- thirty. In oh here, oh, maybe? that's I'm sorry. Yeah, you're 30? doing Celsius space points. Yeah, yeah. we're it's thirty. Thirty's not bad. I mean, it'd be Fahrenheit. bad for Garrett. <laughs> Garrett would be around. Yep. Uh, it's freezing. It's below freezing. Yeah, it's below freezing. Degrees. Yeah. Yeah. That's Fahrenheit. why it's minus one. It's one degree below freezing. Yeah, it's actually the smart <laughs> way to do this, but I don't know why we don't just adopt it. What's wrong with us? 
For I real. do tend to use metric when measuring things because increments of 10 make so much more damn sense no, than increments of No, it's all I use. Right? I'm already all in on the measuring. That's all I use is metric, and I just I don't understand our hesitance. It doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. Well, We're weird. Also, listen, Canada and, and Europe doesn't help because when I watch like Top Gear and Canadian car reviews, they're still talking about miles per hour, and I'm like, like make up your mind. Yeah, pick, pick, a, <laughs> pick a lane, literally. You know, and it's got kilometers uh, showing, but you're talking about miles, and I give up. Yeah, pick a lane. Uh, all right, that's literally. it. We're literally we're done with the show. Thank you all for being here. It's been great as always, and I can't wait for it to do it again. We'll be back next time with even more. Until then, check out all the other cool shows at frogpants.com. There's lots of stuff going on, lots of game shows, lots of discussion that you might enjoy. So do check that out. That'll do it for us. We'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, I had to play that. That's what you do.